in your book, you mentioned stress has a significant effect on mitochondria. It does. Um, significant effect uh, causing mitochondrial dysfunction, um, which you don't really think about, right? Because it's just, it's not a medication. You're not ingesting it, you know, not in the, not in the typical sense. Um, but it certainly affects your mitochondria and can contribute to uh, mental illness. And I want to speak of it in the frame, in, in a, in a, from a perspective of adverse childhood experiences. That's okay. Um, adverse childhood experiences um, have been shown to um, significantly contribute to adverse mental illness and mental health outcomes. Uh, and I, that's a pretty good proxy for stress, I think, especially early on. Um, can you speak a little bit towards that from an adverse childhood experience lens? Yeah. So, so it's, it's well established in lots of trials now, um, lots of studies that have been done. Adverse childhood experiences result in a wide range of mental disorders. So most people think of post-traumatic stress disorder. You have a bad childhood, you're going to have PTSD. Yes, that's true. But guess what else you might have? Pretty much all the mental disorders, barring maybe some of the neurodevelopmental ones that should have occurred early in life. Um, and so if you, if you, if it didn't happen to you early in life, then you're not going to get a neurodevelopmental disorder later in life. Um, but adverse childhood experiences can also increase your risk for depression, anxiety, personality disorders, substance use disorders, um, but also schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Those are all of the major disorders. They increase your risk for developing dementia later in life they increase your risk for dying and early death. But guess what else adverse childhood experiences increase your risk for? All of the metabolic disorders. They increase your risk for heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, obesity, de Alzheimer's dementia, and premature mortality. Um, on average, if somebody has six or more adverse childhood experiences, Comparing that person to somebody who has zero adverse childhood experiences, the person with six or more ACEs lives 20 years shorter than the person with zero adverse childhood experiences. So it is massive in terms of its effect on humans. And so right there, just those broad strokes help us see this connection between what we think of as metabolic health and mental health. They're interconnected, they're inseparable, but then we can get really granular. I can get into all the details, cell biology of what's happening. So, you know, anytime you have a stress response, it's not a disorder at first. It's, it's normal, like the, the soldier on the battlefield or the guy who loses his wife and two kids they are going to be stressed, highly stressed. They don't have disorders yet. Th their body is defending itself. Their body and brain are mounting metabolic resources for self-defense. What does that mean? It means the body, the human body goes on red alert. It means that you are hypervigilant. It means that your heart rate is going up. It means that your blood glucose is going up. Adrenaline levels are going up. Blood pressure is going up. All of these things are happening. Blood pressure, glucose, those are metabolic, right? That's what heart disease and diabetes is all about. Yes, that is your, that is your body mounting resources for self-defense. Already from day one, it starts taking a toll. So your body is going on red alert, all hands on deck to the self-defense system. And that means any other parts of your body or brain that might be fragile or vulnerable might start to fail. If you take somebody who's resilient and very healthy, metabolically speaking, they're not going to have any failures right away. They're going to have the standard stress response. They're still going to become depressed or anxious or hypervigilant or have PTSD symptoms. 
because those are normal, healthy human reactions to these stressful environments, to threats to our survival. Um, but if, the, if it occurs over a prolonged period of time, it starts to take a toll because your body is spending so much energy on self-defense that it means that other parts of the body and brain aren't getting routine maintenance work done anymore. Metabolic resources are no longer going to these other parts of the brain and body. And that means cells can be, start to get into a state of disrepair. When that happens, they can begin to malfunction. And then we might call that a metabolic disorder or we might call it a mental disorder. So we're thinking adverse childhood experience, the buildup of an adverse childhood experience, one to six or even more, um, then puts the body in sort of the hypervigilant stress state where you have the changes that you describe and you begin to accumulate metabolic dysfunction in a certain part of the brain, which you're able to handle up to a certain point where then you begin having symptoms of some sort of psychiatric illness. Is that, a, is that about right in regards to the timeline? Yeah. So we know that adverse childhood experiences predispose someone to having post-traumatic stress disorder, which, you know, saying it out loud, it fits really well, I think, into this theory where you have adverse childhood experiences and then, you know, I, this literature is in the military. So if you have a history of adverse childhood experiences and then you join the military and you have a traumatic event, uh, in war, then, you know, you're at significantly higher risk for having post-traumatic stress disorder. How does that fit in? I think, I think I can kind of think my way through how that fits in, but fits in perfectly people with P so, and even just with that. So, so again, so if you've got somebody with a lot of adverse childhood experiences, mm -hmm. we're not looking for just one event, you know, somebody had a bad thing happen to them once in childhood because most people get over that they move on if they're otherwise safe and secure and have a decent life so we're looking for a pattern of a lot of neglect abuse bad things happening lack of safety over time that again early on in childhood may all be quote unquote normal and healthy that kid is at risk the body is defending itself. That kid isn't going to sleep well. That kid's not going to be thinking well the next morning because he didn't sleep well. Now he's getting diagnosed with ADHD. I'm not always sure he's got ADHD. He may have trauma and PTSD symptoms or whatever. He may just have hypervigilant symptoms because of the trauma that's happening at home. But all of that is taking a toll. Those kids, again, are at increased risk of all these things. So if, if now he joins the military, has a traumatic event, he's much more likely than his otherwise resilient peers to develop PTSD because he's already vulnerable and fragile. If he develops PTSD, it tells us he was really vulnerable. He got pushed over the edge. If he gets pushed over the edge into PTSD, now, guess what happens? What is what is the next 50 years of his life look like? He's at much greater risk for developing every other psychiatric disorder, every single one, other than neurodevelopmental disorders. They had to have occurred earlier in life by definition. So he's passed that window. He gets a pass from neurodevelopmental disorders but everything else in DSM, he's at greatly increased risk of developing. Substance use disorders, depression, anxiety, personality disorders, dementia, delirium, all of them. Bipolar, schizophrenia, all of them. He's at much greater risk. Guess what else he's at much greater risk of developing? All of the metabolic disorders. He's at much greater risk of getting diabetes, obesity, heart attacks, and strokes. And he's at much greater risk of dying an early death mm. from all of that mess. Right. right. 